So all we have are data points here. I don't really know anything about the function or its derivative. Does everybody find their worksheet? And the last one's kind of tricky. I might leave that for you to do. Okay. So I want h prime of 0. Now one of the big things is when you are working with these, you do not substitute in the 0 first. Because if you do, what's h prime of 0? Well, h isn't even up there, but you can't put in the zeros. Because then you just have numbers. The derivatives of numbers are just zero. So first you have to take the derivative. Are we ready? Um, I'll have to see. I should. Okay, so I want h prime of zero. Well, first I have to find h prime of x. So if h of x is equal to e to the x, times f of x. You see the product there? That's the product rule. Okay, so you have to recognize this product rule. Do you remember the derivative of a product? h prime of x, and so if you haven't been doing the homework, you might not remember it, is equal to the first one times the derivative of the second plus the second one times the derivative of the e to the x. And I have to tell you the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Okay, after you take the derivative, then and only then can you substitute the number in. So, you should be doing it with me. I want h prime of 0. Okay, so h prime of 0 is equal to e to the 0, f prime of 0, plus f of 0, e to the 0. And on the AP exam, they often give tables like this, tabular data. What's e to the 0? 1. So what's f prime of 0? We're going to go back up in our chart. So I'm going to go to f prime, and I want to go down to 0. So if I go across there, it's 9. So it's 9 plus, what's f of 0? f of 0 is 5. Any problem with seeing those? So the answer is 14. Did everybody get that one okay? So see, you do get this. What? Yes. Yes. You just have to find it in the table. I don't know anything about the functions. So we wouldn't be able to tell, for example, what the derivative of the function is at 3 because I wasn't given that information. But we can still figure out some of these things using our rules. prime of 0 is so my tools. f prime of 0 is 9. What's f of 0? It's 5. Let's read it out of the table. So yeah, there's a question on the test that's going to do something similar to it. So it's probably a little easier. Okay, let's do number 2. 3 is the tricky one. Now, when we do derivatives, when I have the derivative now, this is the operator, and I have some, that's an x, sorry, some constant times f of x. I can pull that constant through there. Because if you remember, derivative really is a limit. So all those properties and limits apply. So I could take k times the derivative with respect to x of f of x, which is just f prime of x. Okay, so this is j of x. I want to find j prime of 1. One of the classic mistakes is to put the 1 in right away. That's wrong. You have to take the derivative first. So j prime of x, well, I'm going to ignore the negative 4 and find the derivative of f times g. Is that okay? Because I can do that. I can pull the constant out, just ignore it, but I'm going to have to put it back in. I will have to multiply by it. So it's minus 4. Okay, product rule. Marshall, what's this going to be? f of x times, right, plus times f prime of x. And now I want, that's just j prime of x. Now I want j prime of 1. Oops, I the prime. And so I substitute the 1 in. And some of you don't want to show the work, but honestly, if you don't show the work, you're probably going to read the wrong part off the table. It's the problem. f of 1, g prime of 1, 
by the way, this activity came from the University of Minnesota, but, but they're still using their calculus class. Plus g of 1, f prime of 1. Now, can you read your table? Well, you don't have one, I'll put the slide it up here. Okay, so I need f of 1, right? What's f of 1? 3. Everybody there? So that's negative 4. That's 3 times g prime of 1. What's g prime of 1? g prime of 1 is 6. Plus, and then g of 1. g of 1 is 2. Is it easy for me to read the wrong thing? f prime of 1 is negative 3. Everybody finding those? You find that okay? okay? And then we just do it. That's just arithmetic. If this were free response, you may leave it. I would like you to simplify. Yes. I ignored it. I pulled it right out because I can pull this constant through that operator. Well, I'm going to have to do it. I'm going to, I haven't finished yet, but. This? Oh, up here, this is just reviewing a, a limit property that I don't believe I talked about with you. <laughs> you can just pull the constant right through the operator. So if I look at the derivative of 3x squared, that's 3 times the derivative of x squared. And that's just 2x. So that would be 6x. So I can, I can do that. You could bring it along. I don't want to use the product rule three times. It, I don't have to. OK. And I do, definitely want to get it to 3 fourths. So yeah, we're not going to solve it. We're going to simplify it. So, because it's not an equation, is it? OK, so let's go ahead and do this. It's minus 4. It's 18 plus a negative 6. So it's minus 6. So it's minus 4 times 12, or negative 48. Okay, so what I'm going to do is get you going on 3, leave this open for you to try 3 and 4, because I want to get into the, the physics stuff. Because that's on the test, that particle motion, so I need to get there. This is 2. Now, this is, these last two are harder than I think was on the test. The first one is more relevant. OK, can you see that OK? I first want to find k prime of x. Let's get a plan. You guys just want to jump into it, but I want a plan. So k prime of x is equal to, you remember this now? This is the quotient rule. It's g of x times the derivative of the numerator. I'm not going to take the derivative of it just yet because we're going to miss something. OK? And then it's what? Plus or minus? Minus. minus. Then it's the numerator, x times f of x. If you need to put a dot in there so you see it's times, do that. Times the derivative of the denominator. I want to get you used to seeing this ddx, and that's d of x. So it says, find the derivative of that function all over the square of low we go. So it's g of x square. Yes. No, because it's not a constant. I'm not allowed to pull the x out. It's not a constant. I know you want to put in the negative 2, but you can't do that until the very end. Say, say it wasn't an x. I had it been a 2 or something. Yes, then I could have pulled it out in just this piece right here. I haven't done the derivative of them yet. I'm going to. It says take the derivative of this. And yes, we're going to do that right now. Let's do that. So this last one, you got to do product rule. You gotta be careful with this because it's three things together. So you're gonna have to break that up. It's it's tricky. I'm not gonna lie to you. Okay, so k prime of x is equal to g of x 
times the derivative of this product. I have to use the product rule. Now, I could do the product rule in constant if I want to, and some of you will, but what's the derivative of a constant? Zero. So part of it will fall away. Okay, so it's x times the derivative of that, which is just f prime of x, plus f of x times the derivative of x, which is it's hard. Just the product rule. What you have to do is keep yourself thinking straight. Yes. I'm doing the I'm doing the product rule here inside the division. That's right. I know. But it's all bookkeeping, which is where you had some troubles too on your quizzes. Your bookkeeping. Then it's x f of x. And then what's this going to be? What's the derivative of g of x? Is just what g prime of x all over g of x squared. very easy to lose the product rule right in here. And no, I want to just make it one times that f prime of x, but it's long. You have to use the product rule. And then we're going to do this at negative 2. Right? So k prime of negative 2. Now we can put it in. It's g of negative 2. And then it's negative 2 times f prime of negative 2 plus f of negative 2 times 1 minus negative 2, f of negative 2, still a lot of bookkeeping, g prime of negative 2, all over, don't forget your denominator. Some of you don't know your rules. You're going to have to make sure you, you memorize. These have to be memorized. There's not, we try to keep memorizing as minimal as possible, but there's no way around this one. And then we just read it out of the table. So I can't see my table. That's a little bit of a problem. So, what's g of negative 2? Actually, what I could do is this. You guys fill it out while I'm doing it. Oops. Okay, now I'll move that down. Then I don't keep moving back and forth. Oops. And I'm going to leave the last one for you to do, but it's not that hard on the test. I'll cover it up here. Okay. What's g of negative 2? g of negative 2 is negative 5. And it's negative 2 times f prime of negative 2. That's this column. Negative 2 is 1 plus f of negative 2, which is 3. Not as complicated now as it looks, does, is it? Let's get up to the two negatives. So it's three plus two, and it's f of negative two, which is negative nine times g prime of negative two. You see why I want to write all this out? Because I want to get this right. All over the square of g of negative two. G of negative two is four over the square. So what am I going to get? f of negative 2 is 3. I put in 9. I would have had the wrong answer. What? G of negative 2 is... Don't ask me what I'm doing. <laughs> good. You guys are good. Negative 5 squared. Yeah, I have a hard time reading the table. Now do I have it right? Okay. So this is negative 5 times 1 plus 6 times 8, 48 over 25. So I'm going to get 43 over 25. I forgot. What the, I think the answer to the last was negative 2 or something. But I want to get into the physics. Just have to follow the rules, that's all, and then read off the table. So if you're working on this on the test, if you show me your plan here, and you get the wrong answer, you'll get partial credit. 
If you don't show me your plan, you get the wrong answer, you're going to lose all the points. So don't do that. In fact, actually on the exam, if this were an exam question, they would give you the points for actually writing that line out. And you won't get any if you don't. Does that make sense? They want to see what you're doing, especially when they're reading out of tables. They want to see what points you're using. Okay. Why is there two where? This one? This two? F prime of negative two? Because this was the product rule. See, I had to have this. Because this was the product. So it's the first one times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. And I'm not sure, everybody has a hard time recognizing the product rule. Why is the derivative of a constant, you know, why can I pull that through? Let's do that. K times f of x. Because guess what? You should really use the product rule here. So it would be k times the derivative of the second one plus the second one times the derivative of my constant. What's the derivative of my constant? That's why this ends up being just k times the derivative of f of x. This is an operator. It's like a plus sign or a minus sign or a square root sign. It says, take the derivative of whatever follows. What does that mean? So you see why? You don't have to use the product rule of constants. Yeah, you're going to have to do it a couple times. Yes, I'll, I'll get you down there. But it won't be that hard. Move this guy over here. Okay, so what I would do with this is group them. However you want to group them. You could take these two together. So it's x cubed f of x times the derivative of g plus, then it's g of x times the derivative of that product, which means you're going to have to use the product rule again, aren't you? you see that? This is going to have two terms in it. Did you see that? I'm going to have to do the derivative of the product. I mean, there's another rule if you want to know what it is for the three, but it's just easier just to do it. Well, you like the prime symbols better, but to do this one, I have to say I'm going to take the derivative of that, which will be x cubed times, and I can write ddx or I can write f prime of x. The problem with f prime of x, it doesn't tell you what the variable is. You'll see that haunt us later, plus f of x times the derivative of x cubed, which is 3x squared. So this is just saying, we're going to do some work here. This is my plan. This is not the derivative. I have to figure out what that is. And so that's what this is going to be. I think the answer is negative 2. I don't know. I, I don't remember. Wait, I have an answer sheet. It's negative 6. x equals negative 6. OK. I know you guys don't like to move on, but we've got to move on. Now, I need you to get out 3.4 day 2. And I know it's hard to work with the video, but it's really the same as me being here. No, no, you. It's a regular class. I know, but they, they did. And because it was it was in a class. And then you just asked the reserve to pause it. And maybe somebody in here could answer the question. So, no, I just didn't do the area things. Does anybody need a 3 4? See, you didn't write anything down. Now, unfortunately, they were all put together in one video, so that wasn't great. Because, guess what? I shirt this time. I was sick just like this. I always get this. I try not to, but yeah, it doesn't work. Okay. Let's see where we're at. I know, but I thought I had it up here. Okay, I don't. That's okay. Okay, let's see. I got it all ready to go. There we go. Last day. Distance is what you think it is. Distance is how far you travel.
So if I want to walk to the main office, I can walk all at the main office and all the way back. And my distance, oh, I don't know how far that is, but it's quite a few paces, right? It's pretty far to the main office. So I don't want to go down there until I have time. Displacement, though, is relative to where you start and finish. This is where you finish. Oh, I say start and finish. So, where do you end up? So what's my displacement if I go down to the main office, walk all the way around and come back here? It's zero. So displacement is a vector. So if I walk, like if I walk across the floor here, then I stop and I walk back, my distance is not zero, but my displacement is. Okay? So this is a vector. It's basically your absolute value of your displacement. Let's do that. You gotta be careful with that. Sorry, that's an exercise. What's velocity? Speed with direction. Good. It's a vector. So in terms of calculus, what's velocity? It's the change in your what? Position relative to what? Time. So when you do a derivative, you want to talk about how something changes as something else changes. It's not ds dx, it's ds dt. So if time changes, where, where does my position change? What about the speed? So this is velocity. And the speed it's just the magnitude, so it's the absolute value of your velocity. If they ask you a speed question on the exam, it most likely will be in the calculator section, because it's hard to work with those. It's very hard, because you have to look at a graph of your velocities and stuff. So you pretty much can count on it. What's acceleration? It's the change in your velocity as time changes which is the second derivative. It's the derivative, here's the operator, d dt of ds dt. Now, this is not mathematically correct, but it helps me remember the notation. How many d's do you see here? Two. How many dt's do you see? Two. And that's the second derivative. This is the first derivative squared. This is y prime. This is y double prime. Take the derivative again. Okay? This is the first derivative squared. That doesn't look the same as that, does it? No. That's what you have to recognize. It's take the whole derivative and square it. This looks like the d's are squared, but that's just the notation. So if I want the nth derivative, it would be d n, these are used but parentheses of s, dt to the nth. It's just notation. Just what it means. Are you ready? How do you know if an object's speeding up? What's it? No, no it. Velocity and the acceleration are the same sign. Think of dropping the pen. If I drop my pen, the velocity's going down. There's my pen. Velocity's negative, and acceleration due to gravity is also going down. Okay? And we know that if I drop my pen, it's going to speed up. Whereas if I throw my pen up in the air, what if I take my pen and I throw this up in the air? What's going to happen? The velocity is going to be positive or negative if I throw this up now. At the top, it'll be zero. But what about as I, I can't get it up in the air unless I give it a velocity. i got to give it a force. So what's true with the velocity as it goes up? It's positive. And they'll actually have you do velocity. And it could be on a calculator even. And you'll just evaluate it. Is it positive or negative? What's the acceleration, though? 
Velocity is going up, acceleration is going down. So acceleration is negative. So what's happening? It's slowing down. Right? And somebody said correctly that at the top, what's true about the velocity? So when we do the physics problems, they don't tell you anything. That's why they're hard. You've got to draw some pictures and start reading what you do know. Put down what you know. Because you do know the velocity is zero at the top. You might not know where the top is, but I know it's zero. Okay, are we ready to try some problems? Then, we, and we may do some homework problems, we'll see what we can get into. But we're going to do these, um, these middle two problems, and we should try the last one. Okay. And this is um, number nine out of, the, out of the reading, out of the book, 19, I mean. Okay. Find the displacement during the first five seconds. How do you do that? No. What does displacement mean? I want to know how far it's what? Travel from where it started. Now, I know this is a, a parabola, but I can just. So I want to find s of 5 minus the starting position, s of 0. I could graph it if you want me to graph it. I'm assuming it's staying positive. That's not a safe assumption, but I believe it is correct. But what's S of 5? Well, it's 5 squared minus 3 times 5 plus 2. I know you get in calculus class and say, oh, it's got to be different than what we've done in physics or other math classes. It's still the same. If we could do this in, in first year algebra. Minus, and at 0, you're not starting at 0, are you? Starting at zero. So what have I got? We just our heads 25 minus 15 and 12. 12 minus 2 is 10. Do I have any units here? Meters. They may or may not ask you to put units in. Double check. Always read the problem. Now, this is what always messes you up. How do you find your average velocity? It's just the slope. So, V average is just S of 5 minus S of 0 over 5 minus 0. There are other ways to find this if you had other information. We don't. That's why this one, we come back to the end of the year, we come back and look at this differently. And then that's what's going to be hard. We just did that one. That's 10, right? So your average velocity is 2 meters per second. Because this was 10. So it's just 2 meters per second. Yeah, tell me. Average velocity is just the slope of the position curve. You know that from physics class, don't you? Meters per second. Acceleration squared. Okay, instantaneous velocity. I don't want to use the definition of a derivative, but this is S prime of 4. So there's S. So V is equal to the derivative with respect to time of this T squared minus 3T plus 2. And we'll have to figure out what happens if we have an X in there or something like that. But right now, everything matches. What's the derivative of T squared? 2T oh. minus Great. And we're going to evaluate this at t equals 4. Not necessarily will your average velocity and your instantaneous velocity be the same. So it's 2 times 4 minus 3 meters per second. This is just the derivative operator. It says find the derivative because v is ds dt. Right. Using the power rule, this is 2t. This slope here is 3, negative 3. Slope of 2 is, horizontal line of 2, is 0. Derivative of a constant is 0. I'm going to evaluate it at t equals 4. Evaluate. Well, the acceleration is easier. What's the acceleration? 
the acceleration is the derivative of the velocity with respect to time. What's the derivative of 2t minus 3? What's the slope of that y? 2. Acceleration is a constant acceleration. Mm -hmm. How do I know it's 2? What's the derivative of 2t minus 3? Derivative is just the slope of the tangent line. Hmm? Well, this was a quadratic. Had this been a cubic, it might not be a constant acceleration. And what is this? Thank you for saying that. Meters, meters per second squared. Meters per second per second is what it is. Question. Ask. I just took the derivative of this. What's the slope of this? Acceleration is the slope of the velocity curve. Okay. At what value of t does the particle change direction? Now, this particle is moving. It starts at 2, and then at 5 seconds later, it's at 10. So what the, is the particle's doing, and it's hard to do this on my calculator. I have to use parametric mode, but it starts at 2. I'll just... Put it up here a little bit so you can see it. And that's at t equals 0. S is equal to 2. And all this is, I shouldn't even have this vertical line there because I don't care about it. It's a, that's what bothers you. It's one dimensional. And here is 0. So it's s equals 0. So it starts here and it's moving to the right because what's true about the velocity? What is the velocity at 4 seconds? It's a positive 5 meters per second. So it's moving to the right until I get to, I know what t equals 5. Five seconds later, my position is at 10 meters. So it's over here someplace. So it's doing this. And then it's going to turn around. And it's going to come back that way. Now, for me to draw that, the problem is, for me to draw this on here, you can't see anything because I keep right, right on the same line. So what I'm going to do is do this. Except I don't know where it turns around. That's a problem. So let's find out. What, has to, what does the particle have to do to turn around? Velocity has to be what? Zero. So my velocity has to be zero. And what is my velocity? 2t minus 3. Oh, my picture is not quite right. Because velocity was equal to 2t minus 3. Oh. But we're using our information from before. Oh, no, don't do this. Okay, so I have to see where this is 0. So 2t is equal to 3, and t is equal to 3 halves. So 1 and a half seconds. Yeah, we didn't, we didn't ask for distance in the first part. We asked for displacement. Right? Or do we? Yeah, displacement would be correct then. Okay, so I don't know. What's the velocity at t equals 0? Which way is it going in the beginning? When t equals 0, what's the velocity? Velocity is equal to 2t minus 3. No, is it positive? V is equal to negative 3. So... My picture here, I did it incorrectly, so we'll redo it. At t equals 0, because this is what we're going to do with particle motion. There's s equals 0. These are only positions. It's all this here. s equals 1, s equals 2. It's starting here, but which direction is it going? It's negative. It's going to go where? To the left. So I'm going to go to the left until I get to, well, where am I at t equals 1 second? I could figure that out. Where am I at t equals 1 second? Might as well figure it out. What's s of 1? 1 squared minus 3 times 1 plus 2. Where is it? 1 minus 3 plus 2. It's a 0. So it's going to go to the left. Now, that's s equals 0, t is equal to 1. This is t equals to 0. And I can put it on my calculator. We don't have any problems with that. 
And at one and a half seconds, which I'm not sure where it is, it's still going to the left, but it's going to stop, turn around, and come back. And it's going to be at five seconds, it's going to be over here at 10. And you can just, you can just actually evaluate your position at all the different times if you want. And it should be a parabola. It's kind of a parabola. It's a particle problem. Okay, where is the particle a minimum? Where is the particle? Where is the particle when s is a minimum? It's when it stops, isn't it? And where is the position? I want my minimum is going to be that, so I need s of one and a half, three halves. Okay, it's t squared minus three t. What plus three? Go back. Plus two. So I want to know where it is furthest to the left. They might say furthest to the left. They may say minimum. Where is it furthest to the right? But it's definitely going to be a minimum over here. Right? Remember that from free calc last year. So S of 3 halves should make that a T. So that's right. Now you guys like to use calculators, but we may not be in the calculator section. So I don't want to do that. <laughs> you could. I don't, I don't know. But I would just leave it like that if this were a free response question. But I'd like to know where I am. That's 9 fourths. Minus 9 halves plus 2. And I know how you love fractions, right? <laughs> but they're common denominators. I need force. So let's make this force. We'll multiply this 2 by 2 and this by 2. And so I'm going to get 9 force minus 18 force. I'll worry about the 2 in a moment, which gives you negative 9 force. And to me, I could go to fractions for the 2, or I could change 9 fourths to a, a mixed number. How many times 4 going to 9? 2, what's left over? 4 into 9. One fourth plus 2. So where am I going to be? Not very far to the left of the origin, but just right over here. So this position is at t equals 3 halves then your position is going to be, uh, sorry, negative one fourth. Negative one fourth. Because that's where it stops. Negative. This is further to the left than the two is to the right. This is where you are. This is where you are. You're just give me one fourth to the left. Where's my? Okay. Let's do another problem. Let's do number 20. Pardon? That it was going to the left. The negative sign means it goes to the left. Would you like, I mean, I can do this parametrically. You can see the speed. And throw it on a calculator. You can see it start over here. It's going to go over here. Stop, slow down, and come back. I can take the time to do that. It's kind of cool to see. Come on. Be difficult. <laughs> now you don't have to be able to do this, but you can't get the speed without this. Oh wait, there it is. I missed it. There it is. And I don't want to use the inspire because the inspire doesn't show the speed. My complaint. That's one of my complaints about the inspire. It's a pretty major one actually because this is really cool to see. And then you guys, while you're waiting here, you could find the velocity acceleration on the particles at rest. And then we have to describe the motion. OK. And I'm going to change my mode to parametric. It's not that bad. And I'm going to put this one at, it was, now notice that this changes to t's squared. minus, but that's next year, plus 2. And I can get all my positions right out of here. And then I'm going to put the y values. The y values just where is it going to sit on my graph. I'm going to put it up at 2. And then I have, this is the tricky part. My time is going to start at 0. We want to go to 5. Um, x min, x max, I know I'm going to get over here to 10, so I better get to 10. We're just going to graph this. 
Now I'm also going to put my little um, trace on here because it's kind of cool. Now you got to watch carefully. Okay, now I'm going to go back to my window. Um, let's just make this point one. It might work the way it is. If that's not slow enough, I may have to speed it down. Because what it's going to do is take different values of change to evaluate them. Okay, you ready? See, it's speeding up. In fact, let's make, let's not start at zero. Let's, make, let's go from negative five to five. So you can see the motion. Should be slowing down. So it's slower. Stops. See, it's speeding up. Because so it's graphing in, in real time. That's what parametrics, parametrics do. They give you real time. So here's the problem. That's what my graph looks like. It's a silly little line, and it tells me nothing. So if I really want to see this, I could do, um, I, well, no, you can't do that. If you want to see it, I'm going to make this um, just T. Now you'll see it actually look like a parabola. Now I may not have my window high enough. So let's make the uh, Y max get up to 10. Oh, i got to go up to 5, that's all. Okay, watch this. Oh, oh I hate that when I do that. I did one min. How do you get what? It's all in the window. You have to be in the right mode. You have to change mode to parametric. But so don't. But don't. We don't have to know how this. Okay. Here it comes. Now you can see. They'll leave a, tr a trace there. Now it looks like a parabola, doesn't it? Now it should be speeding up again. Yeah, this is, a, I, but it, it's contrived because it's really just like playing whatever, foosball. It's just right there on the one surface. It's not going up and down. It's just going this way. Problem is you can't see it. So when you actually graph it, you have to do this. So I don't want the vertical line. You have to start here and you go over here, you stop and then you come back. You have to draw it like that because otherwise I can't see what in the world's happening. In reality, that's not what's happening. It's starting here and it's coming back, but there's no way to do that. Well, the Inspire, unfortunately, does not give you the motion. It just gives you the graph, which is unfortunate. Okay, we should be able to quickly do 20. And if you want to look at your quizzes, you're going to have to come in for, uh, to make corrections on them. I thought we'd get them in class, but not look at class. At least started in class. So, anybody want to go up there and put the velocity down? Just the derivative. Oh, I can see what I did. I yeah. Find your quizzes. 